Hey, I'm Garrison Doctor with Rep Your Water Apparel. Today I'm down at the Avid Max headquarters in Denver. Um, wanted to show you guys a little bit of our brand that they have in stock here at Avid Max. All kinds of awesome hats, true enamel camp mugs. Throw these right on a campfire if you want to. T-shirts, lightweight, soft, awesome, unique graphics, of course and even some great performance wear on the water gear like our merino blend sun hoodies um, fantastic base layers and also good in hot weather make sure to check that out um, and today i'm going to be tying some flies i'm a signature tire for umqua feather merchants also based here in colorado um, so we're going to spin up some bugs all right today we're going to be tying my signature sweet meat caddis this is the deep version so sweet meat caddis deep the colorway uh, we're gonna be tying today is the lime. Um, so this is tied with UTC wire golden olive to give that kind of yellow lime, beautiful caddisy colorway. Um, this fly is designed uh, to ride hook point up. Obviously it's a jig fly, right? So we're tying it on a nice jig hook. It's gonna ride like this. Um, oversized tungsten bead thus the deep version so this is a great point fly if you like to fish um, you know tight line styles european or modern nymphing styles um, if you want to tie this a little bit lighter for smaller dries for a dry dropper or on your tag just downsize the bead a little bit and otherwise everything stays the same so let's dive in here and get started so in terms of our hook we're gonna be using an Umqua 450 BL. It's a nice wide gap jig hook, comes barbless. Um, I really like this hook. I think it's very sticky, especially in these smaller sizes. Um, I typically tie this fly in sizes 16 and 14. Um, I'd say I fish the 16 more than the 14, but they're both really good. Just depends on what size bugs you're seeing come off. In terms of the bead, this lime version I like with a gold bead. This is a 3.2 millimeter um, tungsten. So like I said, gonna be nice and heavy. Really get this thing down quick and, and uh, in the zone, as they say. So I'm just gonna build up a little thread behind the bead, lock that in. I'm using uh, UTC, or uni thread, excuse me. This is olive in an 8 um, just want something that's kind of similar to the wire color. It's not super critical. We shouldn't see it too much. Um, so I'm going to wind this back just a little bit onto the hook bend. Um, just a little bit farther than you'd think. And then we're going to tie in our wire. There's no tail on this being a caddis pattern, right? Caddis don't have, uh, have tails. So we're not going to worry about that. And this is our Ultrawire Golden Olive, as previous mentioned. This is size BR. I like the BR, uh, but you can use small. Um, you can use different sizes to give a little bit of a different effect. But I think BR is the best, especially for the 16. So we want the wire to go the full length of the hook shank, uh, just to keep a nice even profile on the abdomen of the fly. So wrap that fully forward and then bring your wraps all the way back. Try and keep them pretty neat. We're gonna wrap this wire, you know, in similar fashion to a brassy or a copper john. Okay, so I like to have just a little taper in my body. It's not critical. Um, and then just touching turns nice and tight on the wire. If you have some gaps, it really doesn't matter. The fish will not care. It just matters to us, the tires. Make sure you leave yourself, you know, four or five inches of wire to work with just to make this wrapping process nice and easy. If you cut it pretty short, it can be a little bit of a pain. And then we don't need to come all the way to the bead because we're gonna tie in some materials. So make sure that's locked off good and you can twist that wire off. 
really nice, easy construction on this fly. It's not super hard to tie. So you can crank these things out once you get going. Okay, so the, the thorax, the dubbing on this is Hairline Ice Dub UV Brown. I love this color. Um, it's it just some about the like violet UV brown in the water really works nice. I like to throw a little bit of dubbing wax on the thread here because I'm not going to do a dubbing loop. I'm just going to do kind of a loose dubbing noodle with this UV brown. It doesn't take a lot, but that little bit of wax just kind of helps helps grab onto the thread, makes it easier. So get that going, tighten it up. And I like to have a few longer fibers coming out. So I wanna kind of lock in a couple of those ice dub fibers and leave them a little bit longer. Um, just catching the light and kind of giving a little more bugginess to the fly. So don't, don't get that dubbing too clean. Okay, so one of the things that's unique about this fly design is that the wing is tied just on the hook point side, which helps this fly ride hook point up. Um, and most of the nymphs you see like have a palmered collar all the way around. This fly just has materials on the hook point side. So that, like I said, that really helps it ride how we want. So for the wing, we're gonna use natural dun CDC. Um, so take, depending on your CDC feathers, I'm gonna use two feathers just to get a nice little tuft of CDC. Um, I wanna cut out the central stem, so I don't wanna see the stem on this. And then push the CDC fibers back to get a nice little clean tuft of CDC like this. this is that natural done like I said and I want the length of these CDC fibers to come back just past the bend of the hook so I'm gonna keep them on top and then lock them in a couple of thread wraps in front a couple of thread wraps behind and then just trim those pretty nice and tight Okay, and that's gonna be the wing of the fly. That CDC is gonna move around in the water a lot. Um, initially trap even a little bit of air and really create a, a poopa bugginess that is gonna be a great for this caddis. Um, so the really the fussiest part of this fly is the nest part, which is an homage to caddis antennas. And for this, we need a duck flank feather of some kind. It's not critical what species. You can use mallard, you can use widgeon. I'm using teal today. I like the the fine distinct barring on teal flank feathers personally. Um, and really what we want is just two fibers per side. Okay, so like I said, this is the only part of this fly that gets a little bit fussy, but pick out two fibers, keep them nice and long. Cut them out towards the stem of your feather. Okay, and we just have these two here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is put two on either side and we want these as the longest thing on this fly, okay? So we wanna lock them in well past the bend of the hook at the longest part or even a little longer than any of that CDC we tied in, right? And you can do a wrap or two and if you need to come back in and kind of move these around with your fingernail and get them to sit where you want. Okay, so that's gonna be perfect. You can see that nice kind of texture and length off of these antennas. And now we do the same thing on the other side. Another two fibers, some beautiful teal. Make sure you're matching up the length to what you just did. Okay. Make sure those are sitting how you want. Great. And then just trim those nice and tight. If 
you want to really secure some durability out of this, now is a nice time to hit just a tiny dab of glue. Make sure none of these feathers in the wing are gonna pull out on you. Um, but these are pretty well locked in. I'm not gonna worry about that. And then all we're gonna do is finish this with another little bit of dubbing on the collar. Clean up that thread. Um, so there's two options here. You can continue with the Ice Dub UV Brown, which I'm gonna do today. If you're fishing water that's a little bit more off color, you want a little more contrast pop in this fly, I like to finish the collar with Ice Dub Black Peacock, and that gives a little bit of a heavy contrast ring behind that flashy gold bead um, if you need a little bit more pop. So we want a pretty tight dubbing noodle on this, just enough to clean up around that thread. And um, you can get uh, nitpicky and trim out the longer stuff you don't like. Once again, the fish won't care. <laughs> and then we're just gonna whip finish this and put it in the water and catch a bunch of trout on it. So that is my signature sweet meat caddis deep. Um, you can see the texture of those antennas, uh, the flash of that golden wire, the bugginess of the CDC. Um, have fun tying it. You can crank them out. You're going to like it.